Okay, what we've got going on here today is um, we don't we don't have our uh, Francis Ford Coppola director today, so we got to show some stuff. What we got here is a typical crappy headliner out of a GM product. Okay, these are made on a backer board, and they're foam backed material that goes over this so it's a glue on process it's really really easy the worst part of this is is getting a darn thing out of the truck it's, it's really you got to take every piece of plastic out um, but we had it all out anyway so what I'm going to show you today is the steps uh, where to get the products um, the steps that you got to go through to redo this headliner so I'll let me get a couple tools together and I'll be right back Okay, this, this one's not as bad as some of them that I've seen. A lot of them you can just go like this and that foam will just powder off. Um, this one was sagging, but the, the backing foam was okay. Basically what you want to do is just get yourself a wire brush. You want to be careful not to break the corners or anything like that because that's all going to be pretty important when you put it back in. So you just, what you want to do Get all the foam off of this. I found that a wire brush is about the best way to do it. And as you can see, it doesn't it doesn't take too long. Get it cleaned up like that, and you're ready to put your adhesive on and lay your your uh, material out. So I'm gonna go to work scraping this up because it's boring. So you don't need to see all that. But wire brush just like that. The best thing to do is just keep dragging it backwards towards you and it'll get it all off. When we're done, when we're done, you just got to go clean it up a little bit and then we can get to putting it back together. But this is this is what you want it to look like. Let me tilt it up for the camera. It is a foam board, um, fibrous I don't know if I call it fiberglass or not, but it's, it's, it's a pretty solid board. So let me get this cleaned off and we'll get back on it. All right, start again. Hey everybody, we're, uh, we're getting ready to do the uh, headliner we started yesterday. We got the foam all cleaned off of the backer board, um, nice and clean. You wanna make sure you get all of it because any little imperfection on there is gonna show through that headliner. I don't often glove up, but I'm doing it with this for two reasons. One, because it's a really, really light colored headliner material that we're using, and I also don't want to get any glue all over me. Um, take this and just keep shaking it. It's, uh, this is a, it's 3M headliner adhesive. It's like Super 77 or any of the other different uh, materials that they use. I've had real good luck with this, but you gotta make sure it's shaking up good. So we pre-measured this, I got um, six feet, it's going to give me some overhang on it, which is cool because I'm going to want to fold it underneath. So we've got our headliner material over here that I got on the Amazons, and go shut that compressor off. Yeah. Um, you can get it at Joanne Fabrics, um, kind of anywhere you want to get it really. Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, Hobe Lobe. Um, but there's just, there's just a couple things you need. A really good sharp pair of scissors and a razor knife when you start cutting holes out and make sure you buy plenty of the adhesive because you do not want to run out halfway through this program um, so like I said we pre-measured it we're gonna I got oh, I think hundred and twenty inches or something like that because I'm gonna do the record too um, not today uh, so we'll roll that out cut six feet off it Right, so, like I said, we cut six feet of the material out. Matt's making sure that doesn't fall on the floor because it will be, how do they say here in the south? Room? It'll be room? Yeah, see, I gotta do it. <laughs> Okay, so it's, it's right there. We're going to put this back in. The, you didn't pause it, did you? No. Okay. I just zoomed in a little. Nope. Zoom back out. Yeah, I know. I'll zoom okay. it out. We put the um, material back in that plastic because it will get dirty just staring at it. 
So we want to make sure that stays clean. And we don't know that I feel the end a little. It's all right. They can still see. Yeah, but they can see better now. Good job, buddy. It's fine. Good job. <laughs> Keep shaking here. Take the other one and shake it too. Let me do a little shake. Let me see that one. Let me see that can. All right. I'll you take. Uh, sure. Make sure you take the cap off before you start trying to spray this. Don't point it towards your eyes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And if you look right here, you can actually adjust the nozzle on this. You can have your fan come out like this, or your fan come out wide. We're, I don't care either way. So basically what we got to do is put a, a pretty decent heavy coat on this, and a pretty decent heavy coat on that. And then while we wait, we have a cigarette or something. So, <laughs> um, so I'll, start, I'll start spraying this. It gets everywhere. Be careful your surroundings. If you got a car around or anything like that, it, you'll see it kind of. Put that thing in the car. Yeah, that's good. This stuff is good. <laughs> Now, a lot of your upholstery shops are going to do this. They've got the um, the adhesive in, is in a uh, spray. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? The paint gun. It smells like good. Like, a, like an adhesive should. Did he snort some of that up or something? <laughs> Hold the can like this so the fan hits even because you spray it like this, that, it, yeah. Uh, Just like the spray paint. I'm kind of paying on the running out like me and Justin did that time I was telling you, man. You got two more cans. Oh, you do? Yep. Oh, okay, cool. That's kind of funny. That's what I told the good folks at home is make sure you got plenty, don't run out, because if you run out, you're in trouble. Pete, come on. What are you grabbing that? Yeah, I thought taking the nana can. There is um, the possibility of using too much of this. I'm not, so. And it's, it's weird because ever since I was a kid, any of these spray adhesives, you, get, you gotta let it dry pretty much Back up. before you put the other side on, which to me makes really no sense. You would think putting it on there Wet would be better, but I don't know. Wet's always better. You know what I'm saying? You already went a second time over yours, right? Yeah. yeah. Would you go the opposite direction? I, I did. Yeah. Oh. It don't it? Don't matter. And now we do the same with this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is pull this down here, so we don't get any overspray on. You do not want this adhesive on that side um, because once it's on, it's on. It ain't coming off. Um, so we do the same thing to this. So we 
cut it long enough to where that ain't gonna matter if there's any on there or not. You it. Huh? Yeah, but we do that after. Right now, I'm just concerned about getting any on the, the gray itself. I don't want to do that. And just when you're spraying it, you know, because it's a 60 inch width, which is wider than the interior of that truck, is you don't have to spray right to the edge because you're going to want to have a place to be able to hold it, move it, stuff like that. So. Kind of makes me feel like Spider-Man. That makes me feel dizzy. Dizzy. Makes me happy. So woozy. So, and it says right on the label, do not deliberately concentrate and inhale the vapors. But if you do it indeliberately, you're fine. We got plenty of. We got yeah, we got plenty of outdoors outside. And this is also highly explosive, so don't, don't fart around it. And there you go. Okay. So we let this tack up a little bit. I don't know what it says, the directions. That's probably whatever. Real men don't need directions. That's why Matt's reading them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not fat. I'm just easy to see. You want to wait till it turns yellow. Yellow. I don't think I've ever seen it turn yellow. Uh, when I used to put that veneer on them old cabinets and stuff, when I worked at wood shop, they had some stuff in a giant canister with a yeah, like a welding tank for his so, stuff. And because we went to Horrible Freight the other day and bought a bunch of gloves, I'm taking my gloves off because they're really hot. So we have to wait, but you see my hands are dirty, perpetually dirty. Um, you don't, I can't stress it enough, you don't want to get this dirty because if you do, you, you're starting over and it was already, it, it's, taking the foam off is easy, but it's tedious. You don't want to have to do it a second time. So we're going to take a little break and we'll get back to you. Aggressively tacky. Aggressively tacky. So once, <laughs> once we walk by and this, like slaps you in the head, you know you're good. So, all right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, that's, whoa, you see that? It's aggressive. It's it? aggressively tacky. Um, we'll start it with some overhang. We're going to end up with some overhang. You just kind of smooth it as you go. Um, yeah, you don't want to stretch it too tight. Um, you want it to lay on there even, but it's also got to be tight enough to where it ain't going to have any wrinkles in it. So we've got to knock the wrinkles out of it. So we got to iron. Yeah, we got to iron it when we're done. But okay, so I'll get some gloves. We want to hold. Now we got to hold it up as high as we can. Judge, come walking this way. Judge where the middle is. Let, let it hang a little bit. Let it, let it go. There you go. Let it go. Let it go. About like that. Don't, don't pull it so it comes off. You gotta come my way here. Come, let, come this way. There you go. Okay. And you want to just press it down lightly. You don't want to. You don't want to push too hard because you crush that foam out and it, it won't look right. So. Kind of smooth your hands over it. 
you've already become intimate with your headliner so you know where all the contours are. What's that? Push it, it'll stick. Eventually it will. Yeah, just get tackier. Yeah. 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 Then we'll go back after, we'll let it tack up real good and set. Then we'll go back after. And I'm I'm kind of a fan of folding it over a little bit. Yeah. Um, they don't necessarily do that, but I don't like saggy headliners. I don't like getting in my car and sitting on a thumbtack. You see people putting thumbtacks to hold their headliners. I've been there. It's really not a huge deal to do this. So it's like I was telling you yesterday, the hardest part is the, the fact that you've got to take the whole damn truck apart to do it. And the, the your sun visors are recessed, so there's an indentation here. Uh, we can go back and cut where the Posts go for that, your dome light. I'm putting an overhead console in this, so when we get it in the truck and get it located, I'll actually have to cut here because it, it slides into the, the cardboard. Cardboard, fiber board, whatever it is. Magic board. But that's about it. Um, we'll come back when we do the trimming and we do the edges and things like that, but. That's basically what you want it to look like. It, it's stuck on there. It's not coming off. Um, redoing them is actually, uh, it, it actually works out better a lot of times than the original GM stuff did. So they've, uh, what is it, closed cell foam, open cell foam, seashell foam. <laughs> you know why? Science. That's right. It's all about the birds and the bees. That's right. It's com very complicated, my brother. <laughs> I have seen videos of people doing this by themselves, and they just fold it in half. Yeah. And half, and then fold yeah. it up and half back. Just I mean, you, there's ways to do pretty much everything we do on cars. By I used to put hoods on cars by myself. Uh, yeah, I've done you that know? too. You pull a rotator cuff. Though, yeah, the days are gone, man. <laughs> Your arm would be hurt for a week. So that's. That's it.